Gentlemen, there's a million questions to talk about with this one, but I'm curious, you, I'm, I'm going to start with, you've been in Wes's like about a countless amount of Wes, you know, movies. You've done one. Um, what is it like before this? What is it like when Wes wants you to do a movie? Is it a text? Is he calling you? Is it like, how do you find, does he just say, hey, I want you to save a, like these dates? Yeah, it's kind of, it varies. I think from my experience, sometimes he'll shoot me an email and just, It'll be somewhat uh, um, unclear, but clear enough that it's it's likely that you may be working together. You know, it's, but uh, it's 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 often like, uh, what are you doing in in May? And uh, you know, it either means you're going to Cannes or you're yeah. you're starting the next project. But it's, it's <laughs> what what I find a little odd, and I guess some people you know respond in the negative. But he, he he's always uncertain as to whether you would want to work with him. <laughs> no, I don't know about that. Yeah, it's always he, a little bit of uncertain. Like, would how would you, you feel about yeah playing a director? I'm like, I'm like <laughs> Wes. Yeah, of course, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'll make the time. I mean, the first time, obviously, we didn't have a relationship, uh, and so I. Yes, that's I, the that's the that that takes you to lunch. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, get, you, get, yeah you get to, you get yeah, now exactly. it's just a text or an email. Yeah. It's an email. We <laughs> met. I was actually, you know, my agent was like, you know, Wes Anderson has this piece that he wants you to, you know, wants to wants you to think about. You you know, you're interested? Yeah, yeah, I'm interested. <laughs> and uh, and he was in Paris, and I was happened. I happened to be going to Paris with my uh, my kids like a week after I got this call so we had we had lunch at a place on uh, Saint-Germain called uh, Le Select uh, and we sat down and, and we had a good meal and he described this idea to me and what was interesting was that the character that he wanted me to play was loosely based on on Baldwin James Baldwin little Tennessee Williams he said A.J. Liebling who was his food critic for the for the New Yorker but it but the restaurant was one of Baldwin's haunts uh, during his time in Paris so it was, a, it, Wes is incredibly careful, full of care and consideration in his choices. And it may have been unconscious or subconscious or conscious, but even in that first meeting, there was a bit of information, you know, that he was delivering, you know, about this piece that, uh, that I really appreciated. I'm so curious, what is, you, you've obviously both worked with so many directors. What is Wes like when he's not getting what he wants? Is he, does he have a temperature or is it always cool and collected? And what kind of notes does he give you on set to help you craft that performance? I feel like you've, I've developed a shorthand uh, with Wes. And I know that I'm sure Jeffrey understands what I mean. You, you get a, ver a sense very early on of, of his specificity and the writing style and the... Uh, expectation to adhere to certain aspects of that style and um, not all directors have that or or um, but but you know going in that the, you have to be extremely prepared um, and Wes is always cool you know it's yeah. it's not it's it, I'm, you know he's never really um, Throwing hate or throw no, he's never no. Ne there's never that, yeah. um, and it's it, it's an exploration. But we are all setting out to achieve something very specific, and Wes uses tools that are very helpful, like an animatic that have visual and very detailed um, um, aspects of, of delivery within those. So. Um, once you understand that, it's a matter of building something unique to you and the character within within that space. And you know, another thing that's pretty evident in his work is pace. You know, and um, I, even from when we started on Darjeeling many years ago, we'd nail a scene and it would feel great. And a lot of a lot of his work is shot on moving masters with very complex, elaborate setups. But it's one shot and uh, therefore, there's no cutaways. And so that pace is very specific. And 
Um, he'd say, great, we did that uh, in a minute 20. Let's see if we can do it in 40. You know, And he'd have a stopwatch going and we'd do the scene again. And it goes, that was awesome. Great, 56 seconds. Let's try it one more time. Let's try to get a 40. And if you could get to 40 with all the beats, it's kind of an amazing thing. Yeah, I think his, you know, his, his way of getting what he, what he desires, what he envisions is just keep doing it. And he chooses you know, everyone he works with for very specific reasons. He, he has a sense of, of what you're able to do. And at times, maybe you think you've gotten there and he wants you to go a little farther with it. And that's, that's cool. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love working mm -hmm. with, with a, a director who has an appreciation for what I do, but wants more of it, you know? And he pushes you in the best way, in a, in a gentle way to, to get there. I mean, one of the things that he's very specific about, obviously, is the language. And the language has to be exact. And with another director, I might kind of bristle at that. But his language is specific for a reason. He understands a comma, he, you know, which I just, I've, I adore that. I love that. And so I know if I've shifted something in a way that doesn't serve the purposes of the of the language, I know that it doesn't. It, it could be done better. And you so, start to self correct. Yeah, you, that's and really that's the crazy thing. You, you understand <laughs> yeah. implicitly what yeah. he's looking for. Yeah. So a lot of the work is really about the preparation. Yeah. Last thing for you guys as an individual for each of you. Uh, obviously, I'm looking forward to What If Season 2. Mm. I know you have you can't say much, but what can I get out season of you? Season 3. Whatever we can get. Yeah. And also, <laughs> uh, The Brutalist. I can't wait. Oh, no, I can't wait either. Yeah, so what can you tease people about it? Um, uh, just, um, well, Brady Corbet is an amazing filmmaker. I'll tease you that because he is just the real deal. And um, visually, it's spectacular. But I did this film uh, where I play a an architect um, who basically survives the Holocaust and immigrates to the United States and tries to start a life here. And uh, it's very driven and it's all the hardships and as you'd expect of being a, a Jewish immigrant or an immigrant in any capacity, but um, of that time. Um, and uh, it's just beautiful. It's really beautifully written. It's eloquent. It's very, timely and uh it's the kind of work i i dream to do so yeah i'm really grateful to have shot that what can you tease oh um <laughs> there's some stuff coming <laughs> there's some uh yeah more of the same uh and then some extra <laughs> <laughs> it's a very good answer nice uh, listen congrats guys uh, nice. I wish you guys nothing but the best